So we've been doing a series um, on the site called Film 101, where we're talking to people, uh, costume designers, production designers, all these different people about the job, because a lot of people who are film fans don't really understand what goes on behind the scenes. So I have some sort of generic-y kind of questions I'm going to run by you. For example, uh, what does a costume designer do? Okay. Well, basically, from start to finish, everything that you see on screen on every single extra actor from the underpants to the earrings. Uh, what's the biggest misconception and what is the biggest misconception people have about what you do? I don't think they, I don't think the general public really have one iota of what goes into costume on film. And actually, to reiterate, if I could just go back to your sure. first question, I think apart from the physical supplying of costume, I think the costume designer is hugely prominent in the overall visual of the film because you have to collaborate with the DOP. It's very important that you get your color palette right. You collaborate with the production designer. So the whole thing is an integral thing of utter beauty, that each frame. And also, you get the atmosphere completely, you have to be on it to get the right atmosphere with your director. Because if you bring somebody on that's not in the whole visuals that are in his mind, then not only does it not work, but also it could be a jarring effect on the overall visuals of the film. Plus with the actors, very often you're the first person that they see, so they can very often get the hook from what you're building for them or what you're trying on for them. They get the hook of their character. So overall, actually costume is very, very important. Uh, how soon are you on a movie and when do you leave? I personally am usually on a movie shortly after the production designer, especially if it's a build. And with Ridley, we're either in 1300 BC or 120 years in the future, so it's nearly always a build. So we're there as early as we can get on. And then I'm usually with the film till the end because then I can troubleshoot for Ridley on set. It's very much role with Ridley because he's always got fantastic new ideas. So I'm there to facilitate those for him. Uh, what is the collaboration process like specifically with Ridley? Um, let's, let's do that. Well, with Ridley, the collaboration process is stunningly exciting. He's so inspirational. He's very visual. He has very strong um, ideas, but then he'll give me a brief and he'll let me one, run with it. Sorry. And then he'll let me run with it, which is very exciting. I refer to him as often as I can, but he's very collaborative with actors. And it's important that you have a happy actor. Happy actors give happy performances. So between the three of us, I usually show Ridley where I'm going he might alter that, and then we present it to the actor. Uh, can you compare two directors you've worked with that have different tendencies? Um, I can. I can tell you about a director who, when I went to meet to them, they said this enormous, great big film where, you know, three million come over the hill and meet another three million on the ground in a clash. He said, what do you think of the script? It's fun, isn't it? And I'm thinking, it's a hell of a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about fun. <laughs> but um, every director is completely different in their approach. Um, are there other film departments you have to collaborate with? There are always collaborations with costume, with the lighting department, with the director of photography, and with the production designer. Because you can't, you have to try and avoid putting a beige person against a beige wall. Oh yeah, that's true. Um, what's the hardest part of your job and the most rewarding? I think 
most aspects of the job are hard because it's very long hours, it's very little time and it's very, very stressful that you get everything done in time, that you please your director and you please your actors and you please yourself. But all of that is very rewarding as well because when you hit the ball out of the park, there's no feeling like it. When did you decide that you wanted to be a costume designer? Uh, nine. <laughs> I was nine when I wanted to be a fashion designer in those days. I had my first treadle sewing machine from my grandmother and I spent all my formative years at school drawing fashion in sketchbook after sketchbook. I then went to pattern cutting, dress making, dress design um, school. All through those times, I, from the age, I was cutting my own patterns from the age of 11 or 12, which sounds very pretentious, but actually it wasn't. I could cut a pair of trousers so easily without a pattern when I was about 13 or 14, because the mother of a childhood friend wrote to me um, when I was nominated for Gladiator and told me this. <laughs> she said, you made a pair of trousers to go to a ch children's party <laughs> without a pattern. I didn't remember that, but I was quite chuffed. <laughs> um, uh, how did you break into the industry? I was very fortunate. Um, I had an editor, a partner who was an editor, and he said, you really, because I realised I was not a John Galliano, and I realized in my early 20s that you either would join a wholesale fashion manufacturer and maybe alter a collar every season, or you had to set yourself up as a fashion designer and you had to have a huge amount of backing. Um, I didn't come from a rich background. My mother was a, wid a war widow, and I knew I didn't have the Galliano, you know, to bring out a, a, every year three to four collections, just, just so I, I, I bit the bullet, and uh, film was just absolutely fantastic for me because you know I'm very critical about everybody's <laughs> attire all the time anyway, so I was just I could run and run, <laughs> and uh, he said I should get into this uh, side of the business side of the film industry and uh, he supported me for six months while I knocked on doors and became an assistant, 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 virtually no money. And that's the way I did it. Uh, who are some of the artisans in your field that you admire? Well, the artisans, they're not really artisans in my book. Um, they are goddesses. Uh, <laughs> Edith Head has always been absolutely up there for me. Um, I think she had something like 11 Oscars on her mantelpiece. Um, I'm a huge fan of um, Sandy Powell's and Colleen Atwood. They're just, for me, they are my peers. Uh, I've seen Edith's, uh, I, I've learned a lot about her work. Uh, as a film history buff, and uh, it's crazy what she did, you know? Not only what she did, but she was given so much freedom. So she innovated so enormously all the way through every stage of her life. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, uh, how has your process changed throughout your career? How has my process changed throughout my career? I think it hasn't. I think my work ethic is always the same, that you give 25 hours out of 24. It's not very healthy. <laughs> I'm familiar with that. Uh, what's the best advice you ever got about being a costume designer? I don't think really I had um, any advice that I lived by except for a work ethic, but the advice I give my runners is never say no, um, always do 
beyond the research, sorry, by runners I mean PAs, sure. um, always do above and beyond your research, go the extra mile, don't sit on the internet, go to libraries, go to art galleries, always look at artists for the best stimulation and best um, visuals. Um, and never ever stop. Is there a day or two you will always remember from the filming of The Martian? Is there a day? Yeah, like a day or two that just like memorable moments, like a day you'll always remember from filming? Yes, there is a day I will always remember. Uh, making the surface suit, uh, we were working blind and uh, referring to Ridley occasionally, but Matt was our guinea pig and he's the first person we put it on when he flew to Budapest where we were shooting and he loved it and I can't tell you what that meant to me and my team not only did he love it but he went on about it and uh, he rang Simon the producer apparently he couldn't sleep that night just saying how much he loved it which um, was a huge compliment and we were all very happy uh, from when you got involved to what people are seeing on screen, uh, how much changed along the way in terms of maybe a radical redesign? Was there any dramatic changes that went on behind the scenes? Actually, um, on The Martian, we had um, very much from the word go, it worked, that suit. Had an amazing um, neoprene cutter called Shirley Wilson, had an amazing right hand called Michael Mooney, who is now associate spacesuit costume designer, and a wonderful team, FBFX, who have been with me since Gladiator. They made armor, helmets. They can turn their hands to anything, absolutely anything. So I was very, very lucky. What was your question? Oh, uh, <laughs> how much things changed along the way? Was um, there any dramatic so, changes? So really, there was very little change for the surface suit. It was just... Um, consulting with Ridley along the way, augmenting, embellishing. What we did with the EVA, the extracurricular, uh, what we did with the EVA, the exterior vehicular activity suit, what Ridley would call Mr. Doughboy, um, the big white puffy one, is we reduced it hugely because actually the real McCoy has a huge structure, it takes four people to dress an astronaut, so we reduced arms this big to arms that big, still putting the ruching in, and uh, legs from that to that. They still didn't really like wearing it, but <laughs> they put up with it. You worked on Prometheus, um, and now Martian, and you're getting ready to do uh, Ridley's next Alien movie. Um, you are now basically working a lot with sci-fi and with spacesuits, and how has the... Is there almost like a... a how can you sort of, because you're going to have to reinvent a spacesuit again for for Alien, and is it sort of like you're, you're are you, well, are you, yeah, like are you sort of scratching your head like, wait a minute, how much am I allowed to copy from, this works, and Ridley was really happy, but now we have to do it all again, and on top of that, it seems to me from, as, from the outside, and I think Ridley has said this, that NASA and space agencies look at these sci-fi movies for inspiration <laughs> in terms of what they were thinking about for the future. You know, you look at Star Trek, and some of the inventions on that show are now, you know, the, the tricorder is the iPad, and you, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree, and I hear you. Um, ironically, Bert Ulrich, who is the most wonderful man at NASA, and he's press and PR, he said, you go ahead, you create whatever you want, we'll probably steal it along the way. And I'm going, this is my first week or so of research, and I'm going, <laughs> and yet you Google the Z1, which is the Mars suit, um, up until 2030, and it is Buzz Lightyear. And Ridley didn't, I thought, well, this is a shoe-in for me, because we'll just use the actual NASA suits. But their helmets come down to here, which is much more workable for NASA. But for Ridley, for film, you couldn't see the emotions in the actor's eyes, couldn't see the movement, so we had to go back to the drawing board. And if you Google Z2, 
which is from 2030 onwards, this is a completely different creature. It's dark grey and it's quite unwieldy looking. And again, the helmet comes down to here. It's integral in the whole suit. But no, actually, the um, Prometheus II, Alien Covenant, um, two suits we've reinvented. We've done our R&D and Ridley's signed off on the next two looks. So... Yeah, well, what I'm very curious about is, and I don't want you to uh, reveal spoilers that will get you in any, you know, I don't want to do that, but how does the, Prometheus is obviously, you're basing it, it's a continuation of Prometheus, so how did the costumes you created and the look you created for that film sort of play into the sequel? Do you, do you base it on the stuff that you did already, or is it, let, we're starting again, it's all new? In actual fact, Prometheus 2 um, is not so much of a spacesuit movie. There are two different spacesuits in it, but it is not a great spacesuit movie. And we're only carrying on one look from Prometheus 1, which is um, with David, the yeah. computer. Sorry, which is David, the robot. Um, <laughs> yes, exactly. Michael Fassbender. I know. It's with David, Michael Fassbender, the right. robot. Um, and he's just got the hangover um, of Prometheus 1 spacesuit bits and bobs on him. So it's 10 years in the future beyond well, Prometheus. Well, the thing is, uh, I know you're going to Australia to shoot uh, uh, Alien. Um, does that excite you, being able to like travel the world like this? Or is it sort of like, I wish we were just always shooting at this one London soundstage... <laughs> you know, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I have to reverse you the question. Wouldn't, how wonderful would it be to shoot in Australia? Oh, I've been there for, for yeah. a movie. It's amazing. Oh, it's, it's fantastic. It's an amazing place. And Fox Studios is fantastic. So how lucky? How lucky are we all? No, 100%. Uh, Oftentimes, and you came to Budapest, so you know, that's a wonderful city too. It, it, uh, yes, the world is a wondrous place. Although it does feel like when you get to, I'm so lucky that I get to do what I do. But you almost live a musician lifestyle because you <laughs> arrive in a city, you go to set, and then you fly home. Yeah. And there's not a lot of time to um, explore. I know with a lot of people that work on movies that often you get on a project at the last second or very close to the last second or you're not sure about financing with uh, Alien Covenant, how long have you been working on it? Have you had, do you feel like an ample amount of time to you know what I mean, because Ridley's known he's going to do this for a while Well, um, with Alien Covenant um, with any film, you could always do with more prep, always do with more time, and in actual fact we had our first meeting big round table meeting at the end of August, but officially prep basically only started a couple of weeks ago. So somebody's been working quite hard for no money. <laughs> Wait, I was gonna say, and you start shooting in April. Uh, yeah, I, I, I got to tell you, I'm so enthusiastic. I'm so excited uh, to see his take on it. Um, but I'm going to leave it there and uh, say thank you so much for your time. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.